Welcome to Venice, everybody. After a teary goodbye to my friend Chloe and a six hour long wait at Naples Airport, I finally set off for Venice, where I met up with my mom to begin what would be a very special mother-daughter reunion before I headed to England for my exchange. Waiting for mum to get here on her flight, but I just found out our luggage never made it on the plane. But <laughs> we'll get to that later. Anyways, my mum is without exaggeration a travel fanatic, possessing a ridiculous breadth of knowledge about the history and landmarks of just about everywhere in the world. Truthfully, I must confess that she practically planned my entire two-month backpacking trip. So being able to spend these final moments of my Euro summer with her, witnessing her excitement and passion for each place we visited was truly so, so special. Today is the first day of my little trip with my mum. She actually flew over to see me before I start exchange, which is so lovely. And I said goodbye to Chloe yesterday, who I've been traveling with for the past seven weeks, which honestly felt so surreal. Like, I think when you spend that much time with the same person, leaving them feels like you're leaving like a little piece of yourself behind. But the good thing is that she's actually going on exchange to Manchester which is only an hour and a half from York, so I'll be able to see her very soon. Also, my luggage never made it on my flight last night, which isn't ideal, but I did get a notification this morning saying it should be delivered to my hotel um, today. So hopefully when we get back tonight, it will be waiting for me. But if not, um, and you're wondering why I'm wearing this stinky travel fit for the rest of the video, now you know why. <laughs> Anyways, we have a super busy day today. I think this morning we're gonna go to um, Basilica San Marco and San Marco Bell Tower. Just trying to fit everything in because we're only here for two full days. Honestly, I just can't wait to explore all the little canals and see all the amazing Venetian architecture. I truly think it's probably one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. Mum's already at breakfast, so I better go, but I'll talk to you later. Ciao. So in the old days, you know, Casanova's day, these were enclosed, like the little house, and the boatman was at the back, and inside people had their little rendezvous with their lovers in the gondola. That's so cute. Our first stop was Basilica de San Marco, which was quite possibly the most beautiful church I've ever been to. And let me tell you, I've definitely been to my fair share. It takes influence from the Byzantine style, with the dim lit church representing earth, while the gold gilded dome symbolizes heaven. As the name suggests, the church is dedicated to St. Mark the patron saint of Venice and author of one of the four Bible books. In fact, the church is said to be built on top of Mark's bones, which were stolen by two Venetian merchants from Egypt in 1828. This basilica is truly a work of art, with no area left untouched. Even the floor is adorned in intricate mosaics. Not to mention, the balcony gives you access to the most gorgeous views of St. Mark's Square and the lagoon. Mum and I then made our way across the square to San Marco Bell Tower, or Campanile, as it's called in Italian. We caught the elevator and headed all the way to the top, about 99 metres to be exact, making it the tallest building in Venice. Now, if we thought the views from the Basilica were good, 
those from the Campanile were something else entirely, giving us a panoramic view of the entire city of Venice and its intricate system of canals. If you go on the hour, you might even be lucky enough to witness the ringing of the bell. Having our first chicchetti for lunch, which is like little bites to eat, we have our prosciutto, ham, mozzarella, and what's this one, Mum? Oh, oh, that's also ham. That's also ham. It looks good though. Tummy's full, we headed to Alta Acqua Liberia, a quaint little bookstore packed to the brim with books which are housed in everything from gondolas to bathtubs. Although it's become a bit of a tourist hotspot and the little store can get quite crowded, we still had fun perusing the wacky collection of books on offer. The little penis book and the little book of legs. I think we need to get them. <laughs> and Tom of Finland seems very interesting. Mmm, sexy. Guys, I literally have this calendar framed in my room at home in Perth. That one got like 13 years ago. We then caught a vaporetto over to Murano, the second largest island in the Venetian lagoon after Venice. Murano is world renowned for its art of blowing glass, a practice which has taken place on the island since the 13th century when the Venetian government deemed it too dangerous to have glass factories with open fires operating in Venice. Today, Murano glassmakers still uphold traditional techniques which make their blowing glass unlike any other. I like the chicken. <laughs> Jumping on the Vaporetto again, we made our way across to Burano an island populated by brightly coloured houses. Legend has it that each house was painted a different colour so that the fishermen would be able to find their way home in the fog. The island is also famous for its gorgeous handmade lace, which is embroidered by the women of Burano. It's a bit later now and mum and I have just been chilling in our hotel's garden um, and having a few drinks. But I wanted to show you how cute it is. Look at this. We have a little oasis in the back. And then if we go around this way, we have the canal. And we've been watching gondolas go past. How serene. Anyways, we're just about to leave and I think we're going to walk to Evaporetto and get on and do a little tour around the Grand Canal at sunset um, and then get off in San Marco and have dinner. So it should be a super cute night. wrong ferry and had to do a big old loop back to where we started. My fault. Yeah, <laughs> no, not really. But we're My in the fault. right terminal now and we're just waiting for the ferry again. Um, Guys, look what finally arrived. Oh, I'm so happy. This backpack has literally been my life for the past two months. So I don't know what I would have done if it had been gone for good. I literally feel like a little turtle that has got its shell back. Oh, I'm so relieved.
in Oz, my coffee order is always like a long black with a dash of almond milk. But since being in Italy, I've had to settle for the Cafe Americano because nowhere has almond milk. They only have cow's milk. And sorry to admit, but I'm not the biggest fan. But here they have like every um, milk alternative under the sun. They literally have like rice milk, um, which I did actually drink. It's not very good. I wouldn't recommend. That's kind of a low point in my life. But I can finally have almond milk um, and have my go-to coffee order. So that's good. We began the morning at the Rialto Fish Market, which sells seafood of all colours, shapes and sizes in a beautiful neo-gothic hall. The market has been the commercial centre of local food trade in Venice for centuries. Just beside the market lies the infamous Rialto Bridge, the oldest and indisputably the most well-known bridge in Venice. It's lined with vendors and shop stalls and offers gorgeous views of the Grand Canal. Mum and I stayed for ages, just watching gondolas and boats pass by from the bridge. Hot travel tip guys, if you want to go on a cheap gondola ride, there's a little gondola called a Traghetto near the Rialto Bridge and it's only two euro per person and we just took it then and it's super cute. We're just about to go inside the Doge's Palace where the Duke used to live back in the day. I think we're doing, it's called the Secret Itineraries Tour. I don't really know what that entails, but it sounds cool, so it should be good. The tour actually ended up being really cool taking us through secret passageways to areas of the palace, usually off limits to regular visitors. We weren't allowed to film, but I was able to take a few photos. My favorite part was getting to see the Piombi, the lead-lined prison cells that Casanova famously escaped from in 1756. We even got to walk across the Bridge of Sighs, a narrow enclosed footbridge connecting the palace to the prison. The bridge's name refers to the size the prisoners supposedly made when passing over the bridge, as they glimpse through the small window out onto the canal, taking in their last moment of freedom. After lunch, we took a vaporetto to San Giorgio Maggiore, which lies directly opposite the main island. From here, we had stunning views of the Doge's Palace and the Campanile on the other side of the lagoon. The island is also home to a Renaissance-style basilica, which you can explore free of charge. So apparently on the island right behind me is Hotel Cipriani where all the celebs are staying for the Venice Film Festival at the moment. So maybe if I squint, I'll see George and Amal Clooney getting off their super yacht. We're actually going to this place called La Bitter, which my parents went to 14 years ago for my mum's 40th. So it's so special that I get to go there with her um, and experience it. I've honestly loved Venice so, so much. It's so different from every other part of the world I've ever been to. Like I knew that they um, 
had canals and gondolas, but I didn't realise how dependent they were on the um, canals as a mode of transport. Like here, they only have footpaths and um, canals. There's no roads at all. Everything has to be delivered by boat from fruit and vegetables to fish, online shopping. Even like the police and the ambulances come by boat. So they're very isolated from the mainland and it would be quite difficult, but they're actually really efficient. Like when my um, backpack was getting delivered, they told me that it was going to come like sometime that day and I was like as if they're going to be able to do that because they have to get it there by ferry but it did come um, later that night so much more efficient than I was expecting and guys the Venetian architecture here is so stunning the little three leaf clover motifs and the beautiful coloured marble it's absolutely stunning like I had to stop every five minutes to take a photo it's so so gorgeous but I better get going because our dinner reservation is actually in three minutes but I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon ciao